Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Creative Cow tutorial and in our ongoing look at learning Avid's Media Composer and Symphony, I got a great question from a viewer who actually uses Apple's Motion as their graphics and compositing application. I love Apple's Motion, big thumbs up right there. And she had a question for me. She says, Hi Kevin, I'm an Avid editor and I'm trying to learn Mac Motion and where I'm really stumped is how do I export or share with an alpha channel? I've turned the alpha on, the top right icon, and I've checked the alpha in the share selection, but when I export the MOV file and then I import it into Avid's Media Composer, it's simply white text on black, no alpha. I'm sure it's something that I'm missing, but I would be grateful if you could show me how to do this. Great question, Pam. So let's actually get in to Apple's motion and let me show you how simple this is to set up so that all you motion users out there can be rendering your stuff out for Media Composer with alphas in no time flat. Okay, so let's command tab into Apple's motion and you'll see right here I'm at the project browser. And what I'm going to do is just pick a preset here. I'm just going to choose broadcast HD 1080. We're going to switch the frame rate to be 2398 and 10 seconds I think is fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, I'm going to say open. You'll see we have a new project ready to go. If we need to double check just to make sure the project is set up the way that we want, we can simply navigate our way up to edit, come down to project properties, and you'll see there we are, 1920 by 1080, 2398, 10 seconds. Very nice. Okay, so let's just put some text in. We'll just have some text that we can key over top of something in Avid's Media Composer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to navigate down to the text tool. I'm just going to click somewhere inside the canvas and we're just going to type in, of course, appropriately enough, Avid Rocks. And what I need to do as well here, let me just select the selection tool. So I just need to zoom back. You can see that's very tiny. So we're going to navigate over to the inspector. Let's just increase the size here. And I'm going to center justify this. Let me just turn on my safe zones here just so I can see what's going on. And we're going to take this and we're going to position it about the midway point on the screen. There we go. It's looking pretty good right about there. Now, white, not a good color to use in this example. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over to style right here. And let's just choose a dark color. Maybe we'll choose like a very dark blue color. Because I'll drop this over top of a white clip inside of Media Composer. Actually, in this case, it's actually inside of Symphony. But the technique I'm showing you works the same. Symphony, Media Composer, all the same thing. Okay, now, if I wanted to see exactly what was going on and to see what is keyable and what is not keyable, what we can actually do is just navigate right up here and I can say, well, show me the color, show me what's transparent, just like that, or I can say, show me an alpha overlay. Now, if I want to see exactly what's going to be keyed out, we know from Photoshop that anything that we see that's checkerboard is going to be see-through and we're going to have our avid rocks that we're going to be able to put over top of any clip that we want. Okay, so let's give this a little bit of animation. I think what I'm going to do here first is I'm just going to make the text a little bit bigger here, just like such. And let's use a simple behavior to increase the size of our text here. So we're going to navigate over here to the behaviors drop down. I'm just going to choose a basic motion. I'll choose grow and shrink. And I'm pretty happy with the way that this starts out. I think what we're going to do here is just come down to the end. I'm going to call up the heads up display by simply pressing F7 on my keyboard. There we go. And let's just increase the size just so that it sits on safe title when it's done. That's pretty good right there. And you'll see if I come back here, I can just hit play. Nothing fancy here. There's our text. Very nice. Okay, so we're ready to render this out to work with it inside of Media Composer and Symphony. So what do we do? Well, most people think they're going to come to share and they're going to come down to export movie. Now the only problem with working this way is that you'll see right here the very first option we have is to export. And you're going to see we have all of these options in here. Now most people think, and I'll use this as an example, no problem. I'll just choose H264 and I'm going to come to render and I'm going to choose color and alpha. Now the only problem is, is that if you're not actually thinking a little bit ahead and thinking about what you're doing, you're going to run into problems real quick. The issue that we're going to have in here is, is that we need to pick a codec that supports alpha channels. And I'm pretty sure that none of these codecs in here support alpha channels. ProRes does not, and I'm pretty sure none of the rest of these do either. So what do we do? We're, we're finished. We're, we're, we're out of luck. Nothing we can do. Well, there's always something that we can do. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cancel out of this, and I'm going to navigate back up to share. And what I'm going to do is instead of sharing a movie, 
I'm going to export an image sequence. So the first thing Motion is going to say again is, OK, well, what export option do you want to use here? Now, again, we need to pick an export format that supports alpha channels. And PNG absolutely does. I like using PNG files. So I'm going to simply select PNG. We're going to come to the next tab, the Render tab. Obviously, we need to make sure that we have Color and Alpha selected. You'll see in this case, uh, Pre-Multiply Alpha is selected. And I'm pretty sure that Media Composer and Symphony still do not support Pre-Multiplied Alphas. But we'll leave it checkmarked anyways. We can come to the Advanced tab if we want. The background rendering is set for this computer. Obviously, if I had other computers on my network, I could send this to a different computer to render. And you'll see the summary here. It's basically just telling me that one output's going to be created. It gives me the file name, the file type, what it thinks the size is, the width and height, and of course the frame rate. So what I'm going to do now is simply say next. It's going to ask me where I want to save this to. So what I'm going to do is simply navigate to the desktop. We'll create a new folder. And we're going to call this folder, let's just call it, of course, Avid Rocks. There we go. We'll say create. There we are in the folder. Of course, we'll just call the file Avid Rocks. We're going to say save. And what's going to happen is as soon as I say save, you're going to see the share monitor pop up. And this is actually rendering in the background. So if I wanted to come back into motion, you know, turn this off, turn it on, do some work in motion, I can actually do work inside of motion here. What I'm going to do is just hide it. I'm going to come back to the folder that I'm rendering out of here. We'll just double click on it. You'll see I can come into the Avid Rocks folder. And as I'm working inside of motion, you can see all the files are populating inside of the folder here. Very nice. Okay. So let's just close Avid Rocks. Let's just close the share monitor here because we don't need to actually have that open while we're rendering. And in a second here, our files are going to be ready to work with inside of Media Composer or Symphony. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Command Tab into Avid Symphony because we're going to need to import this file to work with. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our bin here. I'm simply going to right click. I'm going to say Import. And we're going to navigate to the desktop here. Let's just come back up to the desktop. We're going to come to the Avid Rocks folder inside of Avid Rocks. And what we're going to do is we're going to navigate up. Now, most people think to import an image sequence into Media Composer, you're going to be selecting all of the frames. We're not actually going to do that. What we're going to do here is just select one of them. Now, I want to point out this shortcut that I point out all the time, and it always amazes me how many Mac users don't know about this great shortcut. If I'm looking at this, and let's just say hypothetically I had you know, 15 elements and I didn't know which one were, was which because they were all called about the same thing, what you can do is inside of the actual import window or the open window or, or basically any window that you work with like this inside of the Mac, you can simply hit the space bar to get a preview of what this element is going to look like. Now you're going to see we have Avid Rocks. We've got the white background here. Now this is going to come into play importantly in just a second. So with the first frame selected, what we're going to do is navigate down here to our options. And inside of our import options, we're going to make sure that our image's size for the current format, which it is, our uh, file pixel to video mapping is going to be computer RGB 0 to 255. Now, the two most important things in the import process is actually first one located right down here. We want Media Composer Symphony to auto-detect sequentially numbered files. And next, what we want to do with this particular import with the alpha information is I want to invert on import so that white is opaque. So what I'm going to do is simply say OK, make sure our first frame is selected here. And I'm simply going to, again, make sure I'm going to the right drive. And I'm simply going to say Open. What's going to happen is, is that Media Composer is going to import this information. Of course, again, in this case, Symphony. It's going to import the image sequence. And what it's going to do is it's going to do a couple passes. This is the main piece of media that's being imported right now. Then once it's done, what it's going to do is it's going to go back and it's going to import that alpha information. Then it's going to combine them all together to give me a new effect inside of my sequences bin. OK, and once our import is done, you see that we now have an effect, a matte key over here inside of our sequences bin. If I double click on it to call it up into the preview window here, let's just make sure I double click on it. There we go. You'll see there's my Avid Rocks. I can simply hit play. Very nice. And I know I said I was going to put it over top of white, but I think what I'm going to do instead here is I'm just going to open up another bin here. I'm going to come back to Avid Projects. We're going to come down to Stock Footage. And I think I'm just going to choose motocross here. Let's just pick a motocross shot. Sure, why not? We'll just pick this dude here. And I said that our mat key was 10 seconds. So what I'm going to do here is just punch in plus 929. And I think that's actually a little bit too much. It is. So we'll just go back four frames here. 
marked out as an out point, you'll see that the center duration here tells us that this shot is now 10 seconds long. I'm simply going to hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. We'll drop this into our sequences bin. I'm just going to close mode across here because I want to come in now and I want to take our alpha uh, channel or our mat key here with alpha. And what I want to do is I'm going to select the entire clip and let's see, Pam, if this is actually going to work like I know that it is. There we go, Avid Rocks. And let me just come back to the beginning of the sequence here and I'm just going to drag through and take a look at that. There is Avid Rocks completely keyable inside a Media Composer. So I hope this tutorial has taught you a couple things. First, as, as much as you always want to think that you need to go to some kind of a QuickTime movie format to import files into Avid's Media Composer, you don't need to do it. Sometimes image sequences are the best and easiest way to go, especially when working with alpha channels. And the second most important thing is that you always need to think, does the codec that I'm working with support an alpha channel? When you're working with still image sequences, there's really three main ones that you're going to want to stick with, TIFF, Targa, and PNG files. When working with video, if you're going to be exporting things like from a program like After Effects, you'll actually be able to export with the Avid codec, which will make you a QuickTime movie that does support alpha channels. Now, one last thing that I do want to mention is, is that I showed you this tutorial inside of Apple's Motion. I know you're probably thinking, well, I don't use Motion, so this isn't really relevant for me. But you know something? Whether it's Motion, whether it's After Effects, whether it's Nuke, whether it's Shake, it doesn't really matter the compositing application you're exporting from because the concepts of what I'm showing you is exactly the same across all of those applications. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.